Janice Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography and today we're going to talk about how to export in Lightroom but before we get started I'd like to show you my website if you have any questions go to SullivanJPhotography.com and click on this contact tab I also am super excited we just launched our new ebook flowers I give you tips on how to photograph flowers so I'll talk to you about that at the end of the video so let's get started okay so we're here at Lightroom in the library location and I want to make a new newsletter using these images but before we start I want to show you see these that have this actual exclamation point these bottom images well they are all on my external hard drive and I do not have my external hard drive on so Lightroom is telling me they cannot find the actual file to actually export those images. So I could either locate as I turned on my hard drive and it'll find, I mean my external hard drive, and it'll find it and I can go ahead and add them to the actual preset that I'm going to make. You're going to see that. But I'm going to do that later but I wanted to show you this because you need to understand that you will not be able to export if you actually do not have your if you're using an external drive or something else you need to have it plugged in and ready to go so let's go ahead and show you uh, several different ways on how to export well what I love about Lightroom is that you can take multiple images and export them and then I can do a couple other different images and export in a different way and just keep doing it and doing it and working at the same time and another thing is that I don't have to go to Photoshop and do individuals it's just so much easier to use this in Lightroom to export and change to JPEGs or PSDs or whatever you're going to do so go ahead and highlight what you want to export I'm going to do several images so I'll go to the end and use my shift key so I can grab all of these images. You can export by using the file up here, clicking on that, and you can use the export and or you can use the shortcut key right here. Or like I said before, if I want to go back and use those other images and export them, once I do this, the first what I'm going to show you now, I can go back, turn on that external drive and then just export with the previous and it'll take the same settings and I won't have to do all these steps that I need to worry about. Also, you can export with a preset. I have several presets in here and I'm going to show you how to make a preset so if you're doing this continually it just makes more sense to make the preset and then you can export as a catalog if you want. Another way is just by right-clicking. Let's get rid of that. By right-clicking get you to the same area. If you go down here to the bottom it's the same thing that I just showed you. So right-click is super easy. Now if you don't have a preset set and you want to go ahead and do that, the easiest way is to go to the export right here at the bottom left. Click on that and then this is where you can actually make a preset or just go ahead and do what you need to do and get it over with. So do I want to export to my email? No, I actually want to export to my hard drive but you have these options here. Now the location do I want it in a specific folder or do I want to choose a folder later or the same folder that it's in? I'm going to use the specific folder. I can choose the suspe specific folder, <laughs> say that three times, and I've already done it because I'm going to put it on my desktop, but if you wanted it in your pictures or your documents or wherever you can do that. And then I want to make a subfolder. I'm actually going to put, I've already typed in newsletter. This one's going to be newsletter web. So we'll add that. I don't need to worry about adding this to a catalog, that's okay. And then it's going to ask what do you want to do afterwards? Well I don't even worry about it, but you can use these options if you like. Next I want to check out my file naming. So do I want to use this file name? That's what it's under at this moment. Now it's up to you. You can change it up if you'd like. So let's do a custom setting, but you can use this if you want. 
by date and file name or whatever. And then I'm going to edit it and this is what it's showing right here. This is what I did before. Let's just show you. So here's the file name that you originally start with. So if you wanted to add a date you can do it this way if you'd like and there you go it's going to give you the hours. If you don't like it just click on it and delete it and then let's go ahead and insert a custom text and I'm going to go ahead and click on that and I'm going to do news and then WB for web but you know I actually want to insert another custom oh I don't want text let's see what I'd like to do is insert a sequence and then you can move things around if you like delete. So I'm just showing you different ways of what you can do if you like. So it's up to you. You can change it around here but I just wanted to show you this pane. Once you're done you click that. Now if I had a video that I wanted to add to my newsletter I would have had to highlight it within the images but I don't. And then here is that's why it's, you could see you can't even touch this if you wanted to. Now my file settings, I am going to leave it as JPEG, but if you wanted Photoshop, TIFF, DNG, or the original files, you could do it that way. And then your quality here, you would change that up. If you want to limit your file size, you can do that. I want to change this to sRGB because it's a web newsletter. Then the image size for me, you can change all of this for the weight, width and height, not the weight. The long edge is actually where I'm going to go, but as you can see, you can change these. And I don't want to enlarge, and then I made it to the pixels, but you could do inches and centimeters if you like. So my newsletter is, I don't need a large image, so I'm changing it to 72 pixels per inch, but like here you can do pictures, pixels per centimeter, but I'm going to do pixels per inch. Output sharpening, if you want to change it, you can. You can sharpen it for the screen or matte or glossy paper. I'm leaving it on screen, and I guess I will go ahead and leave it on standard and go and sharpen, but you can do low or high, or not sharpen at all if you've already done it. My metadata, I always write keywords as Lightroom. I have another video that shows you how to use Lightroom and keyword your images super easy so definitely check that out. But if you want just copyright only or any of this information you can go ahead and click on that also. I don't need to watermark my images for my newsletter and the post processing I don't need to post process but if I wanted to I could take all these images in Photoshop and maybe if I wanted to change them up I could do that or you can use some other applications. So it's pretty cool that you can grab a bunch of images and then throw them all into Photoshop if needed. I'll just show in Finder so then I know that everything is good to go once it's done. Now over here to the left you can see the add. This is where you're going to add a new preset. So you click on that. Now if you want to make a new folder just click here and type new folder as you could see before, if I was to type in what I wanted under this preset, it would go onto user presets, which is right here to the left. I'll go ahead and just show you. I'll make a new folder. So I'm going to do news letters. So say if I had a something that needed to be printed that was 300 dpi, uh, then I would go ahead and do that. But let's go ahead and do create. So now it just made a new folder or actual you'll see right here to the left and then I'm gonna go ahead and do web. This is my web newsletter and then I'm gonna create and again here it is. This is my newsletter tab and there is the actual preset. Now I'm done with all that fun stuff and so I'll go to export. On the upper left side, you're going to see here that it's exporting all of those images. Just because it's doing that doesn't mean that you have to stop and not do anything. Lightroom's pretty smart, so you can do a whole bunch of other stuff if you want. So say if you, oh, it's, the, it's done. It's under my newsletter web file that I just made. 
So just say that if I needed another one for some reason, all I have to do is see it's a PSD and I don't want that for my newsletter. So I'm going to go to right click, export, and here is my new newsletter area with the web. And it's going to go ahead up here on the right, boom, it's done. So it just made another newsletter or another actual image for my newsletter. So it's super, super easy. Definitely make presets. I highly recommend if you're doing this continual, it's so much easier just to go ahead and initially start up your presets and then you're good to go. I can actually go on my newsletters fast, add these images, which you can sign up for on my website. I'll go ahead and show you that in a moment. So let's go ahead and get over to my actual website. I want to talk to you about a couple things. Okay, we're back here at my website. I just want to show you a couple things really quick. If you'd like to see those images that we just worked on, you can go to the bottom of each of the pages on my website and in this newsletter section right here, you can add your name and your email address. I won't bombard you with newsletters. I pretty much send them out seasonally since I work with a lot of art buyers and interior designers. One quick thing that I'd like to show you is our new ebook, and I really had a great time making it. It's a variety of tips on how to photograph flowers. It's a pretty good steal for $4.99 for the ebook. I do offer a hardcover, and that's because I feel it's, it's a nice table top, coffee table book it's really high quality. If you like to preview the book you can on my website and check out what entails of this ebook. I only give you like I think 15 different views but if you get a chance go to the website and check it out and again I think it's well worth four dollars and ninety nine cents. I am working on a macro book right now, so that should be out in several months. Hope to see you on my website, and I hope that you've learned something new in Lightroom and how to export easily using those presets. Have a great day. Cheers.